I now call the uh, Planning Commission meeting of June 26, 2018 to order. And the uh, first thing we have to do is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So, shall we rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, next we have a uh, roll call, and uh, let me note that our chair, uh, Rick Hernandez, is calling in from the Marriott Northwest 200 Interstate Parkway Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. So, roll call, please. Yes, we'll go ahead and start with <coughs> um, Chair Hernandez. I am present. Commissioner Devon. <laughs> and uh, Commissioner Benjamin. Here. And we, we will note that Commissioners Evans and Holt were unable to attend this evening. So uh, next order is the approval of the uh, minutes, and I don't believe we have an appropriate quorum for that, so I will uh, skip that part. Part. The next item is uh, public comments, and this is uh, part of the meeting that we uh, usually uh, allow people to speak on any subject that's not on the agenda. And if you uh, would like to speak on any subject that's not on the agenda, please uh, get a green card, fill it out, and then go up to the podium and speak. So uh, is there anybody who would like to speak on some item that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, I will close it. So the uh, public hearing item we have today is uh, for a coastal development permit, architecture review, and parking exception for uh, 575 Filbert Street. And uh, so I guess first we need uh, comments from the uh, staff. So Jill, it's yours, right? Or is Brittany, who is it? Good evening, thank you for coming tonight for this item. Uh, the item before you tonight is another one of these uh, small lot infill single family homes. And uh, we've been following your queue, we hope, from past study sessions and other approvals and are very interested in uh, your review on this. We do note that uh, Commissioner Evans, who's not here tonight, did submit uh, his comments in support of, of the proposal. Um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Brittany Cozzolino. She is our uh, newest planner on staff. This is her planning commission debut, and she has a presentation ready for you. Okay. So for a brief overview, I will present the project. Then we will go into questions, public comment, and discussion. The proposed development includes a 1,226 square foot single story home with a 220 square foot, 227 square foot attached one car garage, one uncovered parking space, new landscaping, and associated site and frontage improvements. It's a 3,860 square foot substandard lot in the R2 zone. Permits requested include a CDP, architectural review, and a parking exception. As you can see in this photo, the site is an ideal infill lot with no sensitive habitat or mature trees. Story poles have been provided as the project includes a request for a parking exception. The story pole requirements were reduced by the community development di director in consideration of the applicant to only delineate the front facade um, as the project is for a small scale one story home. The front facade is characterized by the single car garage and front entryway with Gable roof elements and a divided light window. The proposed residence is a three bed, two bath with common areas located towards the front entryway. The project takes advantage of natural light and the western side yard area and with well placed windows and doors that minimize privacy concerns from the neighboring properties. Proposed colors are dark blue grays with white trim and proposed materials include horizontal wood siding, white quartzite ledge stone, and charcoal gray composite roof shingles. Exterior lighting will be downcast and architecturally compatible with the home's design. 
The proposed landscaping plan includes a diverse palette of native drought tolerant species and utilizes permeable pavers and side yard stepping stones to reduce runoff impacts. Preliminary grading and drainage plans indicate that site drainage will be sufficiently directed by downspouts towards a detention basin in the rear yard. The proposed development is well designed and appropriately scaled, would positively contribute to the surrounding neighborhood, and is in context with other small lot development that staff has worked on with the Planning Commission. Other key considerations include the project's consistency with the city's land use plan, general plan, and zoning code. The project is consistent with its residential medium land use density, land use designation, excuse me, will not cause any impacts to coastal resources, including coastal access, and has a valid Measure D certificate. The city's certified housing element identifies the site as suitable for development of one unit and is supportive of developing small infill lots such as the subject site. Although the site is zoned R2, this project is for a single family residence as consistent with the housing element. The site is substandard due to its size and the project conforms to all R2 substandard lot zoning requirements with the exception of parking. A parking exception is requested to eliminate the second required covered parking space. Given the two and a half, 20, excuse me, 28 and a half foot wide lot, uh, the required five foot side yard setbacks, uh, the two covered parking spaces would dominate the remaining eight, 18 and a half foot buildable width. A uh, carport would be incompatible with the design of the surrounding neighborhood. Elimination of this requirement provides a better design and better use of the front yard, and the project would still provide two off-street parking spaces such that granting of this exception would not be detrimental to the neighborhood. As the subject property is a substandard lot, the replacement of one additional covered parking space with an uncovered space is as nearly in conformance with the parking requirement as reasonably possible. In conclusion, staff is supportive of the project as proposed. The project has been duly noticed pursuant to the requirements of the LCP, including mailed notices to occupants and owners within 300 feet, um, mailed notices, sorry, a newspaper ad, a published posted notice, and uh, sorry, polls on the site. Uh, no public comment has been received so far and we recommend that the Planning Commission provide the applicant an opportunity to speak and take any public comment today. The uh, recommended motion is on this slide and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Brittany, welcome and thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions of uh, Brittany? Uh, I'm gonna get there first to Rick. Rick? I have no questions, I've read the report. So I had um, I had a question concerning the um, the potential drainage basin. I noticed that one of the conditions referred to defining how the drainage would work a little further down the road. Is there uh, is there a reason that we didn't want to address it as part of the conditions today, or we're just confident that it's a nit either way? Or where where are we in terms of the the drainage plan? This was a preliminary grading and drainage plan submitted with the application that will be looked at um, in more detail at the building permit phase as is standard practice. Um, we do have conditions addressing site drainage as recommended by the, um, by the city engineer as is standard with. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I w just wanted to get clarity on that section. I'm not offering comment on it. Just wanted to understand it. Thank you. No further questions. So I have a couple questions just for the uh, record. Are there any uh, similar sized houses with uh, substandard lots on Filbert uh, within say a block or two of the proposed house? Do you know of that? Good question. Um, I can't say for sure that it's a pretty well mixed neighborhood uh, with one story and two story homes. And I guess uh, I'll ask this of Jill. Uh, are there any similar homes that we've approved with similar exceptions in the last several months that you can point to? 
You've seen a number of small lot proposals like this. Um, the last one was on a corner lot. It actually needed quite a few variances. Um, it, it was more challenging than this site. Um, this one, I just I want to be clear, the, the only exception that they're seeking is with respect to parking and it, the one covered parking space instead of two. And yet there is enough room on the site for two off-street parking spaces. You have approved um, small lot development with uh, substandard parking um, when you've been able to determine that it's um, conforming to the extent reasonable and in proportion to the lot and, and really the frontage that, that can support that parking. Um, in a case like this, a uh, two-car garage would require a wider driveway and actually eliminate a street parking space. So we, we see um, some trade-offs um, when you get down to the nits on these small lots for um, how much you put on-site versus off-site. So since this is not the first uh, parking exception for a small lot that we've, uh, we've seen and we tend to approve them from a policy standpoint, what do you see as far as uh, changing this? Uh, if this is the only exception, it seems to me we perhaps don't have the correct policy going forward. So. Uh, yeah, so we definitely were thinking about this along those lines, especially when we were working through the uh, ADU ordinance and um, the parking changes that were coming through with that. Again, um, small units. Um, these are, of course, uh, single-family homes a little bit larger. Um, what we notice is if there's a precedent and it's good and it's working, that perhaps it would be better to codify it in a positive manner instead of having to seek exceptions. And so we're really interested in um, feedback um, from, the, from the public, frankly, and, and of course from the commission to uh, get their sense of how, how this is working out. This is completely in line, however, with what the housing element policy intent is for um, providing uh, small lot infill and addressing the city's parking code. There's another um, aspect of the city's parking code that's really onerous that we've brought um, to you for exceptions, which is downtown mixed use development where the city's code is, is a little bit um, behind the times. So if we were getting the indication that we would want to update the parking ordinance, we'd probably look at um, several different um, portions of it that relate to housing. Okay. Jill, thank you. Are there any other questions of uh, Brittany or Jill? Rick? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. I, I would um, point out I'm looking at a, just, just a comment um, prior to us getting into things. There are a number of substandard Houses by all appearances on Silbert, and I'm looking at Google Maps right now. I think there's one that's been approved in the last eight years. It's either on Silbert. I know there's several on Poplar that are substandard and similarly situated uh, properties that have had some variances uh, approved in the past. At least that's my recollection. I don't have all of the relevant facts in front of me, but it seems, um, from what I can tell, the research I've done consistent with other projects. Rick, uh, thank you. So this is the part of the meeting where I, uh, we uh, open the floor for public comments from the applicant. If the applicant would like to speak uh, on this project, they have the opportunity. They don't have to, but if they would like to, they have the opportunity. So. How's that? Better? All right. Hi, my name is Michael Mack. Um, I've lived on the coast side for a little over 20 years, come from a family of four generations here. Done quite a bit of building in town. I've, I've tried to stay, um, matter of fact, I've held my record of maintaining building single story homes in town with a cottage feel um, sensitive to parking requirements. And we've been, been successful, get lots of nice compliments, especially from the um, from the elderly. 
um, living close to Main Street, I've focused a lot in the Arlita Park area, um, and we're getting down to these lots that are the nitty gritty. And um, it's interesting. I, I find a lot of um, a lot of the neighbors as as this stuff goes on. Just being a builder here, um, seems like significantly they're they're all in favor of them because they just they look at a lot of these like they're they're a mess. They're just weeds and although you know people are supposed to maintain them that doesn't really seem to happen but at any rate um, I have to say this one I'm building for my oldest daughter and um, I, I think the other part that's neat about the smaller infill um, projects is it it does give people starting out um, somewhat of a chance to own a home um, because the, you know the value of the lots obviously aren't as expensive as what would be a standard lot with a you know, much larger home you could put on it. And um, so anyways, I just ask that you guys um, stand behind us on it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments of the app for the applicant? Rick? And, and thank you for um, all the help no. you ladies have given us. <laughs> OK, hearing uh, none, uh, is there anybody else who would like to speak? Nope. Hearing none, I will close the uh, public comments and take it back to the Planning Commission for uh, deliberation. So uh, here we are. Rick, if you don't mind, I'll, uh, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead. So uh, a couple of things. First, thanks for the report. Welcome, Brittany. Very nice to have you aboard. Um, it's a very good staff report. I think the exception for parking is a textbook case of when it is clear that it's a much improved outcome to avoid having to do the extra uh, covered parking and avoiding losing the parking space in front. So to me, the parking exception is a no-brainer. Um, the only reason, and, and the only concern I had, and I will say it is a tiny bone to pick, was clarity on the drainage question. Um, you know, in the past, we have given drainage uh, I think we have a time-honored tradition in Half Moon Bay of treating drainage a little less carefully than we probably should. Um, and I think that this is an example of an opportunity where if we are clear about the standards that we're going to retain on site, how they do it is not important to me. And I just want to get clarity about what the standards are for uh, retention. I noticed that we were having the street improvements in front. Um, so I'm looking for less than every known, every detail completely well defined and clarity in terms of the performance standard that we intend to meet because that's an important consideration in my opinion. That was my only comment. I'm going to add a little bit if, if that's okay on Brittany's previous answer on this question. Uh, the requirement for an application for a single family home, um, we request a preliminary um, grading and drainage plan. And when we have a flat lot like this one, it can be pretty simple. But what we do, and I, I want to reassure you, is our city engineer has looked at these plans and is, uh, they don't have calcs yet, but they know from their experience that there's adequate space to have the detention basin. Um, size to the 10 year storm and that is the performance standard. So um, that's where we are at this this point in time and, and how it will be evaluated when it comes in for building permit. Thank you. That was my only my only other comment. I'm supportive of the project. Hey Jimmy, um, I had a little bit of a hard time hearing. Could you just summarize the comments from the city? Uh, if Les doesn't mind, sure. Um, so the short version was they're sizing for the 10-year storm. Um, that's, this, that's the performance standard. So the details uh, can be worked out, but that's, you know, the calculations for a lot like this are uh, not too difficult because it's a very flat lot. Um, and they, so they think they know a lot about what would be required. And the implication I hear is that it's, this is not going to be a rocket science um, figure out how to make this work. And we, it's clear what the objective is. The objective is a 10-year storm. This is a grading when this project is finished. Will it be consistent with the grading on the adjacent lot? That's a question for staff, but I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Very good. 
Rick, any other questions? I do not have any other questions. Uh, as a chair, uh, I'd like to say uh, I like the design. I think it's a uh, fits into the neighborhood, and uh, and I agree with uh, Jimmy that this is the uh, perfect example where we need a parking exception. So uh, if there are no other uh, comments, uh, I will take a uh, recommendation. I move we approve the resolution next in order. I do I hear a second? I second the motion. Uh, can we have a motion? Okay, we hear you. Let's have a roll call vote. Absolutely. So we'll start with Chair Hernandez. Rick. Yeah. Commissioner DeMond. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And Commissioner Benjamin. Yes. Good. Approved. That was fairly easy. So uh, we're next item is the uh, director's report. We want to thank the Commission for coming out tonight for this one item. It was ready to go, and we do intend to cancel the July 10th meeting um, due to um, a couple uh, anticipated absences of planning commissioners and the fact that we have a really heavy load of some other items going on that I'll tell you about in a minute. So we did not want to put this applicant off for a, a whole month when they're ready with, with their project. Um, so, July 24th, um, just a little agenda forecast beyond that. Uh, we have uh, two or three items that are simmering and getting, getting close to ready. We expect to bring you either a study session on a preliminary application and or a proposal for a use permit. And I'm not going to give too much more than that because uh, there could be another one in there too. So, you'll have a busy July in the second half. We are also working on ordinance amendments. As you know, we wrapped up the Planning Commission's review of the accessory dwelling unit ordinance at your last meeting. Um, when we are completed um, all the way through the process with City Council, we're going to pick up short-term rentals with the Commission. You already had a study session on that. Staff is working. Um, I'm, we're meeting with um, interested folks already in the background and, and preparing for that. Uh, there are a number of other ordinance amendments that we think will be of interest um, from City Council based on their direction uh, with respect to both downtown opportunity work and affordable housing work plan that they've asked for through their council priority sessions. And that includes the parking that we talked about a little bit earlier tonight, um, especially with the mixed-use parking. Um, we would like to say we're going to have local coastal uh, land use plan chapters for you in a in a while here because we're getting through um, sub subcommittee has been re reading chapters and giving us detailed comments we're updating them and getting them uh, prepared for uh, public review so we'll we'll need to meet with our subcommittee again to, to plot that course but we've made a lot of progress um, community development director hearing is busy tomorrow. We have Seacrest School Landscaping, 417 Chesterfield is a new house. It's on a severely substandard lot, but it does not need any parking exceptions or variances. So it's kind of funny that it isn't here before you. Um, and it's actually a two-story house. So it's, it's our, what our code is doing is of, of interest to us, and we'll, we'll share more about that with you later. Um, and then 636 Metzger, the application is for a single family home to be used as a family care home. Um, and we have an admin approval of a deck on Railroad Avenue. In July, I, I'm told I'm going to see an addition on, uh, at 393 St. Andrews. It's in the appeals jurisdiction, so we must have a hearing for that. Um, City Council coming up on July 17th. They will have the accessory dwelling unit ordinance um, as recommended by the Planning Commission. That will, uh, we're bringing it to them as their first reading. Um, as you know, they need to make two readings of an ordinance. Um, depending on how that goes, we, we would bring a second reading to them in August, and then that ordinance would be uh, prepared for Coastal Commission submittal. Um, 
July 17th, also busy um, working on an affordable housing agreement for the uh, Metzger subdivision that's at 940 Main Street. This is a subdivision that the commission saw quite a few years ago. The com uh, council recently granted this uh, tentative map a one-year extension, and they're still within their window to, to complete that. Um, we're also going to bring a uh, contract for consulting services uh, for uh, support for specific planning work back to the LUP. Um, we, we're going to get some help with um, document editing, formatting, and mapping so that we're ready to go when we have our, our uh, subcommittee's work wrapped up. And two more things. On July 15th, you may have seen this in your email. If you sign up for community news, you will be invited to. Uh, we're having a meeting. Uh, this is a Sunday, um, July 15th, in Ted Adcock, just in the next building over, uh, for a discussion about housing, just a community conversation about the topic of housing. And it's an emotional topic for some people. It's a very serious topic for people. And it's something where the commission gets into it on a, a very detailed level, site-specific application, but also on a policy level. Um, They're purveyors of the housing element and uh, land use plans. So uh, we're looking forward to this. It's really a follow-up. Uh, City Council had four listening sessions over the spring, um, during which time uh, they reconfirmed the uh, priority of affordable housing. And so this is a follow-up to that where we will explore some of the topics that Council wanted to um, push further, further into codes or, or uh, um, other, other directions, but also to hear what, what we've missed, what, what the community thinks we should be working on. Um, so July 15th, 1 o'clock, there'll be a lunch. There'll be activities for children. Um, there will be uh, Spanish language interpretation. And from 1.30 to 3.30, we'll have facilitated discussions. And um, I'm really eager for this session. Um, we're getting support from San Mateo County and their Home for All initiative, as well as um, their professional community engagement firm, Common Knowledge, who has uh, really deep um, experience with um, getting more people out and um, to have diverse conversations. Um, everyone is welcome. We've already had 30 RSVPs, which is impressive for a Sunday afternoon. And then uh, last but not least, um, we've already welcomed Brittany tonight, but I want to um, really welcome Brittany because on Monday she is going to be a member of city staff. Brittany is here right now as a contract planner through the M Group, but um, city council approved a permanent position uh, for associate planner, and Brittany has um, accepted. So we are uh, thrilled to have her. Yay. And that is my report. Thank you. So just a kind of point of information, uh, does that mean there, there's no planning commission meeting on the 10th of July? No, that was not mentioned. Okay. And also uh, any other form of uh, advertising for this uh, July 15th? Uh, Thank you for asking about that. Um, we have been broadcasting this quite a bit, uh, ad in the paper, of course, and the typical e-news things, but what we've been doing on top of that is personal invitations, and um, we're calling people that we know who are interested. We're looking at people <laughs> and encouraging you to come and um, really digging in deep. And so if there's anything the Planning Commission can do, we, we have a flyer and we can um, provide that to you if it helps um, pass, pass on the word. Um, you've probably received notification through the city's email um, about this, that we'd love it if you'd broadcast it further out. And there's other things. There's what else are we doing? Okay, thank We've you. We've got a bunch of stuff. It's all over. I'm. Okay. All right. So the next order is uh, planning co commission communications. Do we have any? Uh, yes, if you'll if you'll allow me, um, I just wanted to uh, thank. Uh, you, the commission, staff, and the public for their forbearance. It's been a very busy month for me. I was out of town on family emergency 
and um, it's nice to be back. Uh, I missed the business that was happening. I kibitzed a little from the sidelines, but uh, it's nice to be back and be able to vote on such a nice project as my first, my first return. Thank you. Welcome back, Jimmy. Uh, Rick, any comments? I just want to welcome Jimmy back and uh, thank him for doing his best to keep contributing and know he's been dealing with a difficult situation. So welcome back, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next uh, item is adjournment. Do I have a motion? You have a motion. Do Jimmy. I uh, call the question? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you from Georgia. Right. Say good night, Rick. Good night. Good night, everybody.